My aim today is to make this one of the shortest fusion tutorial videos you will ever see. So you're in DaVinci Resolve 18, this one is. Uh, I've just got some footage that I've just recorded of me asking to put some text on the screen. Usually in Premiere Pro, if you want to add effects like text effect or anything else like graphics, you'd have to add it into After Effects and then it will transfer across. And that can slow down your computer as well as it's annoying to have to have two programs open. Whereas in DaVinci, you just click on this button and it brings it up straight away. This is the footage and this is the footage afterwards. So that's before and that's after. That's the easiest way to think about it. So at the moment, there's no effects. So, it just, so it's, just, it's just normal. But if you were to add anything in the middle, then it will go before, make these changes and now after. So if you want to add some text in, uh, your first thing you have to do is add merge. Merge. I'll show you what happens if you add text before you add merge. If you come over here and grab the text icon, and then you just connect the before out, and then the text to the after, this happens. Not very good. So you need to disconnect those. Make sure you add a merge, and it goes with the same as if you're overlaying anything. So if you add just a blur, for example, add a blur in, you can connect the before and then to the after, mess with the settings and it will just blur it. And then if you want to then add text with that, you'd have to instead of putting blur to the out, you'd have to put blur to merge, make sure it's to the yellow one, because otherwise it won't work. And then the text output to merge and then merge to the after. And then your text will be above the layer of the blur. But if you don't want blur, then it's just as simple as before to merge and then to after and then the text goes into the merge. And then you have your text on the screen. The reason why you have to connect the before to the yellow of the merge and not the green is because the yellow is background and then the green is the foreground. So obviously you want your text on the foreground in front of well, the footage or the blur or whatever it may be. And so it needs to be on the foreground. So now what I want to do, I want to add like a box that goes behind the text and extends at the same time as the text is going to extend outwards like this, just as I'd add a little bit of animation. So what you need to do is come over to this background node here and drag it on. And then instead of adding another merge, you can just drag the output right over here and then it adds the merge in the background. But obviously it's now just black. So I wanna add a mask to it. And with the background selected, you can come up here to the mask button and press it and it will automatically add that mask over the top. So now what I wanna do is come over to the controls and adjust these accordingly. So I want it to be just bigger than the text. And then I want the width to go all the way in so it's non-existent. And I'm gonna click this diamond button here, which I've mentioned before um, in the last adventure video is a keyframe. I'm going to go forward a few frames. I want to start here. So I'll set a keyframe on the width there. And then as my hands go out, I will extend the width of the box. And I want to do the same thing, but with my text layer. So I want my text to start mumble jumbled. I'm actually going to add the same exact mask so I don't have to repeat the steps of the keyframes with the mask on the background. And by doing that, I can click on the rectangle and control C, click on the text, control V, and it will add the exact same animation on the text as it does with the mask. So the text will disappear there and will come out. But what I also need to do is as that's extending, I need to go back onto the text layer, add a keyframe on the tracking and then I can go to the last frame by clicking this little arrow here on the mask, go back onto the text and we're now on the same frame and I can extend the tracking outwards like that. So now when I move my hands, it all comes out together. But now that I've done this cinema animation, you can see it's not very smooth. So what I can do is come up here to spline. And if you are used to After Effects, then you'll know what this section is because if you've used easy ease, easy ease before so on the left hand side you'll see all of the different effects that have animation on them um, i'm just going to do one at a time if you click this button here or zoom to fit so you can see it a lot easier but if i select on this keyframe i can do the standard of easing it in out and then also easing it in a little bit so then it's a smooth animation and i'll do the same step with all the animations that I've got. And I do this with every keyframe, just so that it's not a straight line to start to finish. It kind of smoothly moves. So now if you watch it back, you might not see much of a difference, but it is a lot smoother. Text on the screen here, please. Now there's one more thing that I want to do, and that's rather than turn this into just, rather than having a plain background, I want to have just a black border, and then I'll probably make the bit in the middle blurry. If you select on the mask itself, and then change this from solid, untick it and it's no longer solid, you can then change the width, which is basically a stroke on your mask itself. And now when I click off, as you can see, 
it's just still has the same effect, but it's just the border. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I want another version of the footage of me so that I can put it just in this box here. So what I'm gonna do is click on the before and copy and paste it. And as you can see, it automatically creates the merge and also the copy, but I don't want it both of the befores to go into merge and then just go to the same thing. So I'm gonna disconnect both of these and connect the original before to the original merge two. Then this merge three, I'm gonna to connect to the merge two and the background I'm gonna to connect to merge three. And then I need to add a blur. So I'm gonna drag the blur in and I need to connect these two. So again, the easiest way of doing that is just to select this and add blur and it will automatically connect the correct nodes for you. The next step is to add the mask on the before. So obviously at the moment it's adding a blur just to the full thing, but I want just the central to be blurred. So I'm gonna copy and paste this mask so it's the same size and has the same uh, keyframes. You need to select solid again, and I'm gonna change the blur so it's not as blurry. And then you might wanna adjust the size of it all again, because as you can see, with the same sizes, it is overlapping the border, which I don't like. So I'm gonna adjust the size and get a little bit so that the middle is blurred, but the border isn't as blurred. With that, you then have your text effect. The text comes out, the box comes out, and it just stays in the middle of the screen with a bit of the background blurred so that you can read the text properly. I'm gonna try and break down quickly just what the nodes mean. So you have your before footage, which is just the main footage on its own, what you're currently viewing on the screen. That then goes into merge two, and inside Merge 2, think of it as like a folder. So you open up the folder and inside Merge 2, you have all of this mess. What this mess is telling us is that we want another copy of before, but it's blurred and has a mask on it. And as well as that, we also want a background, a black background, which also has a mask on it. And that's our border. And all of that goes into the Merge 2 folder. That then gets passed through to merge one, which has the text on top, and then it goes to the output. So now when I go to the editing bit, you will see it's automatically transferred across onto here. And that is basically how nodes work.